Well, as you can see, these panels are already installed. But I'm going to walk you through just exactly how I installed them and show you exactly what I did. The location of these panels, I basically took a cardboard cutout and laid these six out here when I originally started. And then I found room for two more over here. And as you can see over there, I took the air conditioners out there and way down here at the end of this row in order to make room for those four panels to fit. The two panels at the end, this one here and that last one hanging over the edge over here, those two were additions after I learned eight wasn't going to be enough. So that's how I kind of chose where I was going to put them. Otherwise, the vents that are here, those were already there, and I didn't really have to work around them much. And on this side, there's a couple of roof items here also, but other than that air conditioner, there really wasn't much in the way. And I left the bathroom items here okay. So what I basically decided to do is to use L brackets here where these mount underneath and connect to the bottom of the solar panel, come out, go down, and then branch out. I guess they're Z brackets, not L brackets. Yeah, I guess they are Z brackets. So these Z brackets are then I bolted them straight down on the RV. I took the screws. Now, the one thing I would do differently if I was to do this again is I would probably use regular screws as opposed to these self-setting. The self-settings were very helpful when I hit main beams inside the roof. But most of the time it was just the, the plywood roof that I hit. And so they're just bolted straight into them. And I think regular screws might, might would have just been a little bit better, might would have been a little bit better option. But you can see I covered the underneath of this with lap seal and then bolted them all down and then came back and covered it again. So this is totally sealed under, around the bolts, on top, around the back, everywhere here is completely sealed. And I've got four mounts on every one of these. And as you can see, I'm gonna to try to manually zoom here so I don't have to walk down there. It's like that all the way down in every panel. So they're held up pretty good and they've already traveled thousands of miles. I haven't seen any movement in them whatsoever. I don't see anything moving around or changing. Uh, they, they've held up very good and I'm, I'm very happy with it. Now, I chose to do it this way as opposed to some of the other mounting methods. Some people use the mounting methods where they can take them off and, and work on them and stuff. I didn't do that in this particular case because I, I bought a, a, an older RV specifically so I could mount the panels on the roof and not have to worry about putting in hundreds of dollars of mounting braces and clamps and, and rails and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if I would do it again exactly the same way other than, than changing the, the screws I used here. But these have held up really well and I really don't have a problem with them. So all of the cables, these are run in, in originally I ran these in eight in series. And then when I added the panel there at the end and the panel at this end, it ended up being 10 series. Um, I got to an RV park and had a branch shadow right across the back here the first RV park I stopped at. And that immediately told me I needed to, uh, to separate these into two strings. So I created a string of five on the back here of the RV where they're all perfectly facing straight up. And another one with these two and these three on the front. That one has a little bit of a tilt. So if I get an option to point towards the south, I usually try to make it point towards the south. That way I can get a little bit more sun out of the front than in the back. But for the most part, they produce about the same and it hasn't made much difference. The cables run in two sets. These run around like that. And as you can see, one runs off of this side and down this way. The other one comes off of this side and runs down this way and runs back underneath this panel and comes out to run with the other set from the the other set of series here. They all run down there and then there's 
I'll see if I can get underneath underneath this front panel. There's some caps like on the shed. Uh, they basically seal caps that prevent any moisture or water or anything from getting in. They work really, really well. They tighten up tight around the cables and keep them from leaking or anything like that. And I haven't had any problems. Inside, those wires run straight down and into that front closet in the RV or in the fifth wheel. And then from there, they run into the bay. And I'm gonna take you down and show you the bay. Uh, I didn't choose, the, they are all flat mounted. There are no tilts or anything on them. Um, I didn't wanna go through all the extra to put money of paying for installation, quick install, you know, uh, taking all that time to send a whole bunch of money on installation for minimal gains. I just don't think it would have been worth it. It might be nice to, to mount somewhere I have extras that slide out like this at some point. Um, I might try that at some point where I put a couple of uh, drawer racks underneath two panels here and then have a set slide out on both sides and give me an extra four or six panels. That would be kind of cool, but I really didn't think it was necessary at the time. And as it turns out, it really wasn't. I got 3,700 watts up here and it, it, they seem to work really well. So I haven't had any problems with them whatsoever. Performance wise, they're 3,700 watts. I live here in sunny Florida, right in central Florida, right about where the rockets launch off at Cape Canaveral area. And it produces between 20 and 25 kilowatt hours of energy every day. Part of it I use to run the air conditioners in the summer, I run a little short. And in the winter, I run a little short as there isn't enough sun then. I run short two times a year, but for completely different reasons. You've probably seen this part of my RV multiple times now. I never really understood the end part of where everything ended up coming from. So as you can see right here, I've got two sets of wires that come out of the out of the top of this bay. And these actually come out of the closet in the bedroom. And they run down and into this shutoff, shutoff switch here. Sorry, I'm having a hard time getting the camera turned the right way for you. But they, they both run down here and into here and the second set runs in here and then obviously they come out on this inside down here and go back into the other side where the inverter is and I'll take you over there but this allows me to turn off and on the, the solar from this bay right where they enter from the inside of the RV which comes out of the roof of the RV where they come through this wall as I talked to you about it before they come through this wall up here and after they enter they come down and around the bay over to this side and enter the 6000 XP and in the 6000 XP you can see here I've got PV1 and PV2 and they both enter here and then the 6000 XP of course has a shutoff switch also so this gives me a secondary shutoff switch to turn these panels off and on but even at this late hour of the night with very little light out here we're getting 200 watts out of that set and 200 watts out of that set or 190 watts but it is seven o'clock at night, the sun has gone down and it's been overcast for the last couple of hours. All right, we're gonna take a look here at these stats for the Aptos 370 panels. I picked them up from Signature Solar a little over a year ago. And so I got about a year's worth of stats in here. Now keep in mind, this was not full-time living the whole time. So you're gonna see some of the stats are a little bit lower in some months and prior to January. And that's because there really wasn't a full-time usage. There are some months that are good and heavy, um, but that's from traveling and stuff. So let's just kind of go through the stats here. This is kind of a three month peaks and valleys. And you can see here since it got hot uh, back in, you know, around the beginning of May, um, we've really been uh, hitting the, uh, the, the the solar is is coming in, but we keep getting these rainy, stormy days, um, and it's uh, really ha hitting us hard. So we've actually had to hit the red ones of the grid here, and um, 
blue is the, the load power, and then yellow is the solar input. So you can see the solar peaks during the day, and then at night the, the green, the blue doesn't go all the way down, but yellow does. So that's where you kind of get the ups and the downs. But you can see from the state of charge here um, how this really has at this point you know just it just drifts in the middle there and up and down every single day and really um, very rarely do we make it up to you know close to a hundred percent and very rarely do we make it down to zero so it kind of drifts in the middle here for days and days and weeks on end sometimes and usually what happens is when we have large rain uh, storms come through for you know one two three four five six days here in a row this is when I when I struggle and have problems or here when I had you know four or five in a row and then it got a little better and then we had another three or four in a row and then it got a little better and then we had another four or five six in a row uh, those are the kind of things that really just knock us out there's just no way to recover from that many days off without having enough battery backup to last forever and you can see here at this time of the year it just it just keeps peaking out over and over and over and over but you don't have quite the heat here you have you know much more mild days in the air conditioner you're not running near as much so um that said i'm just going to scroll down through these stats and let you take a since you have a, a good glimpse of, of what they're the power they're producing they usually about one and a half um um, you know, between one and a half and 1.8, uh, which 1.8 would be their max. Um, so this is actually pretty good production every day. And you can see the voltage here is pretty consistent. Um, it comes up in the morning and I can zoom in, like zoom in on a piece of this here. And you can see in the morning it comes up. Uh, we'll see if I can just zoom in on one day. It, when it comes up in the morning, it is, you know, powered power straight up at 604 you know sunrise basically and stays there all day long and then just powers right off at sunset so there's really never a problem with it having enough power um, coming from them uh current's a different story but uh power isn't but you can see during this time here after there's enough light right around in this area it starts to the, the current starts to flow we get enough power out of them Voltage stays pretty consistent all day long, though. You don't really have much trouble there. Um, and so that's that's basically um, the, the... Then we kind of look at the overall stats here. Uh, this is day-to-day -day for the last 30 days. And then you can see here, our per, you know, our load usage is somewhere between 29 and 30 right now. Our input is, you know, just dead. Like today was only 14. Um and so we're having, you know, we're struggling a little bit now. We do have the solar shed coming in, and it brings can bring, you know, another four to four to seven kilowatts a uh, kilowatt hours a day uh, of energy in, but it's not enough really in these these days to to completely do it. Now you get back a little bit further um, last month and the month before, and you could see it was easily out producing what was here, and a lot of this is air conditioner related. Um, a lot of this is just simply, um, there's no, no way around it. And here's 12 months. Um, and you can see right around here in December, this is about the time we switched to, uh, living more full time in the RV as to living at the house, uh, very often. And so you can see the usage here is just much higher than, you know, 629 versus 611, um, 6, 681. 756 versus 678 so this is this is the month where i really you know june and july have been the two months where i've really struggled is 180 in production and 264 in use or was 687 in, in production and 756 in usage so this is kind of what it was but you look back here at these old months and and they're the only limiting factor to the amount that i had here was that just the batteries were full you couldn't simply couldn't store anymore so um, how much I could have stored and if I had large enough batteries I could easily live live through all of these and you can tell this from the state of charge bounce So here is basically almost an entire year of state of charge and you can see time goes long periods of time go down Before we get even close to the bottom or we have to get you know even close to the top and most of the time If you've got too much Sun, this is where you look at so these could have easily stored more power and I could have definitely used large, larger banks here, 
but at no time did I have enough power to recharge those banks completely. I could recover and, and go through waves of, you know, day one and then a storm and then they come up and then lose for a storm and then win for a while and lose to a storm and then lose to, and so three, four five storms later and a month later, you know, that we lose the state of charge. Um, so there was almost a month in there and two months in there between usage. So you can see uh, all the stats are here. But these, these, the, the Aptos 370 watt bifacial panels have performed really well. The brand is just fantastic. Um, I purchased them from Signature Solar about a year ago and I've been very pleased with them and I didn't have absolutely no problem with shipping. I had no problem with their customer service. I have no problem with anything. I'll include the links down below to the, the panels.